I'll add a new event handler and go to the code behind. Now, I'm going to pull data from the cloud, but I'm actually not going to do this from within this page, because since we're using MVVM, I'm going to call a method on the main view model, and the, main, and the, and the view model will go to the cloud and bring the data. So what I'm going to do is call app.viewmodel.loadVenues. Of course, I still don't have this method, so I'm going to implement it. And here is our new method. Now, to get data from the cloud, since, since it's a, a REST service, I'm going to use a very familiar class called WebClient and create a new instance. Now, the URL that we're going to hit is the same URL of the service. But before that, let's see some things that this service can do. So you see, this is uh, the standard way of calling the service. I can also um, add uh, a limit a limit parameter and change the number of uh, records that we see here. Okay. We can also add the location. We can add a parameter called location. And let me just grab a location from here. And put the comma in the right space. And when we do that, notice that we have a new column here called distance, which displays the distance from that specific location to the venue. But of course, from our application, we would like to get this data not in an HTML format, but in JSON, right? So what we can also do is tell the service that we want to get this as JSON. And here we get a valid JSON that we can now use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this into the URL, of course, without the, the hard-coded location. Okay? So we'll get 50, uh, 50 venues, and we're going to get this in uh, JSON. And now we're going to use client dot download string async using the, the URI that we just created using this URL. So now, as you can see, this is an asynchronous method. The, the, the process of download, downloading data from the cloud can take several seconds. It all depends on, on the signal that we have uh, in our phone right now. Of course, we don't want to, to uh, make the UI thread stuck, so this is an asynchronous method. So what we have to do here is that we have to register to the event called download string completed and add some logic for the time that the data comes back from the cloud. So what I'm going to do here is, of course, check that there are no errors. And only if there are no errors, If there are no errors, then I'm going to uh, get the result. So uh, to get the result, I will declare a new variable called JSON and get its value from e.result. So now I got the string from the cloud. But the, really, the, the real magic happens now because I have to convert this JSON to list of venues. And how would I do that? Any idea? Deserialize. Again? Deserialize. Deserialize, right. Did you get an uh, ASB? Okay, so here is one waiting for you after the talk. <laughs> so I have to deserialize the JSON into a list or an array of venues. But I don't exactly remember how to do this. Maybe there is an open source package that can help me? Yeah, Newton JSON. Right, right. Who's get it from NuGet. <laughs> Right. <laughs> Did you read my uh, manuscript, my uh, demo script here? No. So I'm going to open the. I'm going to uh, manage my NuGet packages in this uh, project, and I'm actually going to a local, uh, a local repository which I uh, recently created. So as the gent gentleman here said, I'm going to install a package called JSON.NET, which will be downloaded from the internet or in this case from my uh, directory on my hard drive and will be added to the solution. You see, I now have a reference to newtonsoft.json. So now, what I can do is use another snippet and use the JSON convert class that I just got from the newtonsoft.json to deserialize the JSON result that I got 
into an observable collection of venues. This is exactly what I wanted to do in order to get the data from the cloud and convert the JSON into an observable collection of the venues, right? So uh, let's run this and see what we have right now. So I'm running the application, Visual Studio deploys it directly uh, to our application and we see venues, real venues from Sofia. I have no idea what it's saying, but I'm sure you do. <laughs> um, and if you like it, feel free to uh, give a round of applause or anything. Thank you very much. By the way, we can keep this going. Every time I run the application, you see something nice, you can uh, give a round of applause. Just makes me more happy. Anyway, a anyone uh, is familiar with those uh, venues, by the way? Yes? OK, great. So uh, maybe you can suggest one of them later for me when I uh, look for something to eat uh, for dinner. Anyway, so this is a phone, device, a phone application. We typically use our phone outside of, of our house. And we would like to present the data according to the specific location we are currently at, right? So what we would like to do is to enable the, the, the usage of our D GPS, which is part of our phone, and start using it to display the right data. To start using uh, the GPS, I'll add a reference to an, uh, to an assembly called system.device, which allows me to interact with several sensors in my machine, but specifically, I can now work with the GPS. And the namespace in, in which the GPS can be found is system.device.location. Now, what I'd like to do is add a new property in my main view model called current, current location, and the type will be geocoordinate. Uh, and we said current location, right? So now our view model exposes the current location, but of course we have to get the current location from the GPS, right? So the main object that we will use to interact with the GPS is called geo coordinate watcher. So I declare a variable uh, of this type, and actually I'm going to pass a parameter of the level of accuracy I want in the GPS. So I'll select, of course, high because I want to know exactly uh, which are the closest restaurants or pubs to the place I'm at, I'm at right now. We have to set up some uh, more properties on this GPS. So I'm going to say watcher dot movement threshold equals 20 meters because I don't want the, the event that called uh, position change to be raised all the time, only if I move more than 20 meters. And uh, we are going to start the GPS. Now the GPS starts sending us uh, events where the position is changed. So we will register for this event, position changed. And in this event, we're going to write this funny code. If not e dot position dot location is unknown, I'm going to set the current location, current location to e dot position dot location. Why we are using both position and location in the same sentence, I don't know exactly why, but apparently this is the way to work. So now the GPS gave me the current location, which I can now start using in my application, right? So I'm going, to the, I'm going back to the load venues, and what I'll do here is declare a new location uh, variable and get the current location in a string representation. Now what I'll do is I add the location parameter to this uh, URL I'm sending to the service in order to pull the data according to the specific location. Let's run this application and see what we get. And you immediately see that we get the list of venues and for each venue we can see exactly the, look, the, the distance between uh, where we are right now and the, the place of the venue. But this is not the right distance, right? <laughs> so, uh, 
So let me tell you why. In the emulator, we can open this another window, which we can uh, use to interact with our uh, device. For example, we can use the accelerometer, or not. We, can, we should be using the accelerometer and uh, change the uh, angle or change how the phone is positioned if you are uh, using games or anything else. But for, for us today, we can go to the location, search for Sofia, and let me just dive in and look for Vitosha Boulevard, right here, right? And now, let's run the application again. And we can see that now we do get the right distance, okay? So this is what we had to do. We had to go to the emulator, specify the, the first location, and then now we can get the, the real location of the device. Great, so now application supports location, but in real life, when an application uses location, we will probably want to display the data on a map, right? So we want to add a map to this application. But if you look on the, uh, on the design surface of the application, we currently don't have anywhere to add the map in. So in order to make room for the, for the map, I'm going to use one of the most popular controls in Windows Phone development called Pivot. Anyone heard of Pivot?